Hi everyone, I'm Dr. David Wackenfeld and I'm the Chief Scientist at the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park Authority and I'm here to give you the second reef health update for 2020. The first thing I'd like to do is offer my sincere thanks to Dr. James Kerry who fulfilled my role for a couple of months while I had some leave. The first thing I'd like to show you in this update is a map of the actual temperatures on the Great Barrier Reef at the moment. And this is from the Bureau of Meteorology Reef Temp product, which is a product that we use very much for keeping an eye on the condition of the reef. The reef is huge, as everybody knows, but its length stretches from latitude 10 in the north to latitude 24 in the south. And because it stretches so far from north to south, not surprisingly, there's a really big temperature difference from one end of the park to the other. So up here in the northern part of the Great Barrier Reef, we can see temperatures that are above 30 degrees at the moment, whereas at the other end of the park, down at the southern extreme, we can see temperatures as low as 26 degrees. So there's a five or six degree difference between the southern end of the park and the northern end. As far as the corals are concerned, what really matters is not the absolute temperature, but the temperature anomaly. In other words, how different is the current temperature from the average for this time of year? And this temperature map, again from Reef Temp, shows us that anomaly. Now, for most of the park at the moment, the temperatures are pretty close to average. So the pale blue or light yellow colors are respectively slightly below or slightly above average, but those amounts really aren't anything to worry about. The thing that I want to draw your attention to is this blob of really quite warm water up in the far northern Great Barrier Reef. Now this blob was there last week when Dr. James gave you an update. It is still there and in fact it has become even more warmer than average over the last week or so. And that is an area of at least some mild concern at the moment and we have to keep a careful eye on that area and see how that develops in the coming weeks and months. This map is showing you the overall accumulated heat stress that the corals have experienced since the beginning of summer, so since the 1st of December. Now for the most part, that map is dark green, which is great. That's the perfect scenario, it's what we want to see. There is very little or no heat stress accumulated whatsoever. There is an area in the inshore southern part of the park that is showing some slight heat stress accumulating, and not surprisingly, given the big blob of above average temperature water that I talked about a moment ago, we do actually see right up in the far north an area where there is some small accumulation of heat stress. Now that heat stress isn't really enough to cause coral bleaching yet, but of course we have to keep a careful eye on the situation. We do have some widespread but very mild and low level reports of coral bleaching. That's entirely to be expected at this time of year, but we just have to keep an eye on that situation. The forecasts for the next few weeks and moving into February and March are that obviously the temperatures on the Great Barrier Reef will increase, but also that anomalies will increase. And so the prediction is that that blob of warm water that's up in the north there will be more warm water like that in the central and possibly southern Great Barrier Reef as well. Now, we don't have firm forecasts at the moment about exactly where and when and how that warm water will develop. And in large part, that's because, as we said right at the beginning of this summer season, there are no really strong drivers for the Australian weather systems at this stage. So for example, the El Nino Southern Oscillation Index, the index that indicates whether we're in a La Nina or an El Nino phase, that index is inactive at the moment. It's not driving the weather patterns that we see. As a consequence, what's going to happen to the Great Barrier Reef as we go through the rest of January and into February will very much be driven by local weather patterns. How much cloud cover there is, how much wind there is, how much sunshine there is versus how much rain. Those are things that we will be watching very carefully and of course giving you weekly updates on that situation. So that's the end of our second Reef Health update for the year 2020. I hope everybody had a great Christmas and New Year season and that 2020 is a good year 
for all you watchers and also for the Great Barrier Reef itself.